In this Photoshop demo, I'm going to show you how we can bring an element from Adobe Illustrator back into Photoshop to create a really cool background effect. So to show you that, I'm going to go to File and Open, and I'll find my Chapter 6 folder right here, Folder 6.3, and I have two files, but I'm just going to start with the top one. Okay, I've got a simple photo here, my son and I sitting outside. No big deal. But I want to do a cool effect on the background. Otherwise, it's just a big standard photo. Okay, I want to do a cool effect with the plants. So in order to do that, I cannot do it on a background layer. So I'm going to double click the word background. And I'm going to call that original picture. Now, I need some color to do the effect for the background. So I'm gonna create a brand new layer by clicking the plus. I'm gonna double click that name and call that black layer. I always hit enter on a PC or return on a Mac to accept the name. And as I've shown before, if you hit D for default colors, you can fill the entire layer on a Mac you hold your Option key and hit the big Delete key. On a PC, you would hold your Alt key and at the same time hit the Backspace key. Obviously, I'm going to pull that below the original picture and then I'm going to click up here on the original picture layer. What I need to do is cut out a copy of me and my son. So in order to do that, I got to trace all the way around these two figures. So in order to do that, I did the work for you. Okay, your layers panel typically is going to be grouped right down here with your channels and your paths. It's always layers and then channels and then paths. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay on this top layer, come over to my channels, that just shows different uh, value arrangements for the colors that are in your photo. And then I'm going to jump over to paths. Paths are tracings. So you could see right here when I click on the words Jonah and dad tracing, I've got this tracing going all the way around. You're going to learn how to make these in chapter 10. We just haven't talked about them yet. So I'm just going to do the tracing for you here first. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my window over so you could see this for a minute. With this tracing selected, I'm going to go to the pop-up menu on my Paths panel and make a selection. Okay, Feather. It asks me how much do I want to blur the edges. Every photo I take usually has a very slight blur to it, so I'm going to highlight that. If it says zero, that means no blur, like cutting it out with a pair of scissors. I want a 0.2, like a quarter of a pixel, just a minor blur to this photo. I click OK, and now I've got a selection all the way around the two figures. But I have these little openings right here in my armpit and a little opening in his hair. So I have this other path called openings. I'm going to click on that one, go to the pop-up, make a selection again, but this time I'm going to subtract. This is just one big tracing. I'm going to cut holes through it. So I'm going to subtract from my selection and click OK. So now I have openings here and up in his hair. Perfect. I click down below, so all my tracings are now gone. They're turned off. I jump back over to my layers and I'll slide this back over so you can see everything. Now on the top layer, I hit Command J on a Mac. That would be Control J on a PC. And I make a copy of just the two figures right there. See, there's the black layer underneath. There's the copy. And that copy sits right on top of the original. The difference is the copy has no plants. So here's the copy. If I take my move tool, see, I just made a copy. And if I let go, I just go to edit and undo that. 
oops, let's get that screen. There we go. So now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stay here on the top and I'm going to check the physical size of this file. Image menu, image size. This tells me it's 11 inches wide, it's eight and a half inches high, and it's high resolution, 300 pixels per inch. I got to remember that. Now, when I go to file and open in the same folder, 6.3 illustrator patterns, I have an illustrator file. Okay, when I open that, Photoshop is going to recognize, wait, that's not a photo. That's a different type of file. So it's going to give you the import PDF window. It's going to ask you to convert my drawing into a photo. So I want to make sure that is also 11 inches wide, eight and a half inches high. And I also want to make that 300 for the resolution for detail. If my photo up here is in a color mode of RGB, I want this color mode to match also as RGB and I click OK. So we've got a photo exactly the same size as this photo over here, but now it's just a pattern. All I have to do is hit on my Mac Command A for select all. On a PC that would be Control and A to select all of this image. I go to edit menu, copy all of that pattern. Then I click back on my first photo and I simply go to edit, paste. Paste the pattern right back on top. Obviously, I don't want it sitting on top. So when I slide it down, you can see the cutout of the figures. But this is blocking 90% of the plants. I don't want that. I'm going to slide this pattern under the original picture. Okay. So now here's the trick. In between the original, which has all the plants, and this texture, this pattern right there, in between there is a line separating that layer. You can see a little hand pointer. Okay. So what I'm going to do is hold my option or alt key and without pressing down on the mouse I'm just gonna move my mouse up and down on my desktop like this when I move into the right position I'm gonna get this little square with an arrow pointing down I haven't pressed the mouse yet I'm just moving it on my desk when I see that little box with an arrow pointing down because I'm holding my option or alt key that is a uh, trick for creating what's called a clipping group. I'm going to trap this original picture inside all the squares of this pattern. And the gaps in between those squares are going to fill with this black color like that. Okay, so here's how it works. Either you can be on the original or the pattern, doesn't matter which layer. You hover over the line that separates them. Hold your Option key on a Mac or Alt key on a PC. And again, without pressing your mouse, you just move your mouse up and down right here. When you see that box, click your mouse. And now this photo with the plants has now been trapped inside this pattern. The reason why I made this copy is if I turned it off, we are trapped inside the pattern. This entire photo is trapped inside that pattern. This black layer is filling in the gaps between that pattern. See, you can see it right there. So without that copy, we would be trapped behind a fence. We made that copy, so it just sits right on top. It just happens to line up with the original photo. And there's a really cool backdrop effect here in Photoshop, incorporating an Illustrator pattern right back into Photoshop so you get some cool background effects. I don't need the Illustrator panel anymore. Don't need to save that. I will save this one. File menu, save a copy. 
And I will call this one my last name, first name, background pattern. Always on my desktop, always as a JPEG, and always high quality. There you go. Cool background effects right here in Adobe Photoshop.